For the past week and a half, I've been playing around with Steam's in-home streaming beta, and so far, it's actually pretty nice. There was a couple of changes that have come up in this past week that have really made uh, a, a huge, huge, huge uh, leaps in term, terms of performance, and not just because, you know, they're improving maybe the way that they're doing the streaming or anything, but it's the way that they are uh, down, basically downscaling the video to uh, accommodate machines that just, you know, can't even hardly display video at 480p. But for those of you guys who aren't familiar, Steam's in-home streaming is essentially uh, the ability to uh, remote desktop in or just to even put it in simpler terms, take the screen that you would normally see when you're sitting and playing games in front of your computer and taking that video snapshot there, right, and streaming it over your home network into another machine. So why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you have an old laptop or just any laptop and you don't want to download a game that's like 30 gigabytes onto the laptop. Or maybe that laptop does not perform as well as your desktop machine, okay? Uh, well, there's a number of reasons why you wouldn't want to put games on a laptop or maybe just an old computer. And it could be any one of those things. Well, this would essentially allow you to stream these games from your main computer onto whatever that remote device is. And we could probably expect to see these things popping up for, you know, your, for mobile devices and such later on after they perfect it for, uh, for PCs. But this is one of Steam's things they're trying to do in order to essentially uh, PC master race all over your living room. Now, if you think about it, that's that's a lot of stuff going on in between those two points. It's not just play the game on your computer and you could see it on the other one. No, you got to remember there's the, the performance of your your main machine, and of course, there's the performance of your network, uh, the strength of your wireless signal, and then of course there's the performance of the machine that you're streaming to. It's not necessarily going to run. Uh, Steam is not going to run on a 386 and allow you to stream, you know, Tomb Raider uh, onto that. It's not. It's not that's not going to work out. But today we're not going to consider Wi-Fi as part of this of this whole network. We're going to use it, of course, but I'm not going to take the laptops and move them around and show you guys what happens when it desyncs. I'll tell you that it does end up desyncing. You drop frames, the audio gets choppy, and that's pretty much it. We're focused primarily on, in, in the most optimal conditions, how is it going to perform? And I want you guys to see how that works. So this is the basic setup that we're going to be using. I have a spotlight on my controller. I have the primary machine on the left, and then I'm going to have one of the two laptops on the right hand side essentially being the receiving machine for the stream. On the left hand side of that computer is an i7-3820, 3.6 gigahertz overclock of 4 gigahertz with 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, and a 560 Ti for the uh, video card. A, a good, solid machine. Uh, obviously the video card is starting to get a little dated, uh, but for the games we're going to be using today, it plays all of them at 60 frames per second uh, on the settings that we're using, okay? Because we're going to have Tomb Raider going, and Tomb Raider with Tessellation and the fancy hair and all that crazy stuff does end up taxing this machine quite a bit. Uh, but on the right-hand side is a brand new MacBook 15-inch, uh, what is it, a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core? Uh, it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, none of this stuff really matters all that much, honestly. But it is a good laptop. It is actually a really great laptop. I'd be lying if I said it was good. It's a great laptop. Uh, and it is a, a Mac running OS X. Okay, and I'm saying that because uh, I don't I don't want you guys to think that I loaded up Windows on the Mac and of course it's going to stream just fine on the same platform. No, we're going cross-platform here. So the controller is plugged into the MacBook. So everything is being sent to the main machine on the left-hand side over the Wi-Fi network, of course, uh, and then it is coming back to the system in, 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 uh, in the form of the actual video, the response that you're getting. So let's go ahead and slow things down a little bit by half. And you guys can see that even here, even at this speed, it's hard to really see a, a, a noticeable difference in the way that the game plays. Now, I recorded this at 60 frames per second because I knew I was going to be slowing it down for you guys. So you're seeing 30 frames per second right now. Okay, if that makes any sense to you, hopefully it does. Uh, but right there, item found. You saw that on the left hand side, it actually came up a little bit faster. It's larger, so it's easier to see that difference. But I'm going to go ahead and slow it down even more so you guys can really, really visualize exactly how long it takes to hit a button and actually see a response. And then, of course, get that response from the main machine uh, all the way back to the laptop again. Remember, controller to laptop, laptop to main computer, main computer processes over the network to the laptop. So here it is right here. This is 25% speed. I'm going to jump, jump, right? It's This is actually really, really, really fast. We're talking... Uh, maybe 10 milliseconds or so, 10, 15 milliseconds. I can't give you an exact time uh, because I'd have to shoot at much faster than 60 frames per second to get you really, really good millisecond timing. Uh, but what I can tell you is that it is perfectly playable uh, on the uh, on the laptop 
over the wire over Wi-Fi. The the amount of latency that's created between the two games, as you can see right here, it's virtually nothing. And let's fast forward to this part right here. Where I'm pushing a lot of buttons in very very quick succession. It's a very difficult room that I just walked into, but this is perfect because we're gonna be able to see uh, how the uh, all this button mashing and everything syncs up with the screen. So here we go. Let's play it again in mega slow mode. This is 12.5 percent. All right. So every second. Is, is basically lasting, I think, like eight seconds or something. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty slow. You can even see some of the tearing on the computer on the left, which you weren't able to see before. And this is, I think, a sync between the frame rate of the camera and, of course, uh, the frame rate of the computer. But notice when I hit buttons that, that the game is reacting very, very, very quickly. Uh, on the right-hand side, when I hit a button, remember, it's even though it's feeding that machine, it's coming from the machine on the left. So it's, it's, it's just really, really good. Jump, really, really tight. You go back and watch that again if you want to. But let's go ahead and move on to another game. Here we're going to do a comparison between the, the MacBook, obviously still being the receiving machine. And I put this, I put it right in front of the, uh, the main monitor because I really wanted you guys to see the difference, uh, especially when you're talking about like first and third person shooters. You have a lot of movement on the screen. Platformers uh, is a little bit different because, you know, even though the entire screen's moving, it's still not like this entire immersive experience where everything's revolving around you. And that's what I wanted to capture here. And obviously first person and third person shooters, it's very important to have a very precise mouse. Uh, and so that's why the, the mouse is now highlighted here. You can see, look at that. You can see that there is a really, really serious uh, delay and here it is again in, of course, ultra slow motion. Watch my finger, I'm about to shoot. And then you're gonna see the delay. So there's the tap right there. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty significant, right? It is a pretty significant delay between click and actually seeing it firing. Now, now keep in mind, this is the delay between sending the click of the mouse to the computer. The difference between the two computers is actually not that great. Uh, and I think what's happening here is actually, it's, it's actually very simple. Uh, keep in mind when you're playing these games, you're streaming them, that your computer is, is doing the work of displaying the game and of course capturing and restreaming it. It's like you're streaming to Twitch or something. Now I'm gonna slow this bit down here with Tomb Raider and you're gonna see that Playing directly, this is the mouse connected directly to the computer, I'm not streaming. Uh, the delay here is virtually non-existent. But now let's go ahead and stream it to the other machine, uh, and you'll see that there is a difference in the way, uh, in how much latency is involved, but the difference is not that great between the two machines, okay? Look at this. Okay, see, one more time, slow motion, there's two screens, you're gonna see there's very little difference between the two. The, the biggest delay is actually created by the mouse click. So it's, 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 it's taking longer to send a mouse click back to the machine, uh, to the main computer, uh, than it is for it to take the video uh, and encode it and send it back to you. So to me, this is basically says, I mean, besides the fact, yeah, it's beta, there's gonna be more, uh, more improvements and everything coming soon. Uh, it just tells me that your, your host machine plays such an important role here. I mean, that, that's, that, it's almost like it goes without being said, but you're now seeing it. We're, we're talking milliseconds of improvements that can make some of these first person shooters be absolutely uh, playable, okay? Now, uh, maybe not competition ready, which you, we're not going to expect to see that anytime soon, but definitely playable without, uh, you know, being annoyed by the, uh, the sluggishness of, of the mouse and the response and everything. Uh, but that's on the more demanding games. You know what? I bet you if I were to fire up, which uh, you know I, I don't have for this video, unfortunately. But if I were to fire up uh, something like you know Counter Strike or something, which is not a very graphically demanding game, a processor intensive game, uh, not so much, not like you know Tomb Raider and of course Planet Side Two. Uh, I bet you that would probably run pretty good. Because remember, we we were playing uh, with a controller, uh, which is wireless, uh, going into a laptop. And then we were playing Rogue Legacy, which is again a very responsive game, a very very quick and responsive game. Uh, and there was very very little in terms of uh, of latency involved. And it was 100% playable like that. But here's the thing: most people are probably going to be using the in-home streaming to plug in like their shitty old laptop. Which let's go ahead and swap out for that right now, as you can see what it looks like playing Tomb Raider on a shitty laptop. Uh, most people are going to be playing their uh, they're couch friendly games, which usually are not going to be things that require extreme precision such as, you know, CS, okay? Uh, we're talking games that, you know, you could play Tomb Raider 
uh, with a little with a little bit of the squishiness and everything using a controller, and you probably would be okay. Now here is my old Lenovo Y410. Uh, it's like a 1.6 gigahertz uh, Core 2 Duo. Very very old machine. There's no way in hell that it would ever play a Tomb Raider at even 320 by 160. It would not happen. It's 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 just not going to not going to work. Uh, but because of in-home streaming, I'm able to play at the uh, at the wonderful frame rate of 20 frames per second. <laughs> now now something to, something of note here, going back to the performance of the machine, uh, it seems fairly obvious that Steam is actually slowing down the frame. And you can't really tell here in the video. Maybe it looks a little choppy, but you're watching on YouTube for fuck's sake, so you're not really going to be able to tell. But it actually kicks the frame rate down to sometimes 15 frames per second on the main computer that you know can play these games you know, on high. Uh, and it, with with like you know 60 to 90 frames per second, you know you can. Uh, but what it does is it seems like even though I'm streaming to this laptop at 480p, which is like the lowest quality that you could possibly get, uh, it still is slowing down the uh, the performance or downgrading the performance of the main machine in order to essentially match uh, the end product. So it's got. I don't know exactly how they're working on the back end, but at least in this video, you guys have been able to see uh, how the uh, how, how the game. I guess you can see how it syncs up between uh, when you send a signal to it versus when you actually see the response on the screen. Uh, and it seems to almost entirely depend on, obviously we're not taking the wireless portion of the network into, into account here, uh, but it entirely depends on the, uh, I, guess, the, I guess, the intensity of the game itself. So if you could play uh, Bioshock Infinite on uh, complete ultra mega PC melting mode uh, at a solid 320 frames per second, then you probably have enough processing power to stream uh, that to basically anything you want with very little, uh, uh, possibly very little latency. Uh, I don't know that to be, you know, for, for a fact, but if I could play Rogue Legacy at a thousand frames per second, and you saw what the kind of latency was involved there, but then kick it over to Tomb Raider, which I could play uh, at that current setup, I was at 60 frames per second. Well, you could see now the difference between how long it takes to process data and then send it back to you. So very, 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 very good so far. I'm very pleased with this. You know, again, most people are playing, uh, you know, couch games. I mean, I don't, I don't know who I am. I'm playing platformers and uh, Astra, you know, uh, awesome knots and everything. Like when I'm sitting down on the couch uh, on my my uh, through the streaming system. You know, I'm not necessarily playing, you know, Counter Strike or, or anything like that. So I'm looking forward to getting some more out of this. Uh, Steam OS is getting to a point to where I could probably take it and install it on my machine out in the living room, in which case I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys. I have a little video project that I've been working on, uh, basically what it's like to run Steam OS. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has been informative. If you guys want to go ahead and check out uh, the, the in-home st streaming beta, you actually have to go and sign up for a group, uh, which I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll try to find it and I'll leave a link down in the description below. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys got some good information out of this. And I'm, uh, hopefully I presented it in a, in a, in a form that makes sense to uh, everybody. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am in love with this system. PC Master Race, bitches. Thanks for watching. Mike the AK Phony. I'll see ya.